so far, I have been very much in, uh, uh, excited about uh, 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 this meeting and many new information and uh, new ideas. So uh, this shows the, uh, uh, my uh, colleagues uh, in Japan and uh, at, at NIH and current colleagues, including Robert Wart, my boss, previously. So I will talk about uh, so this uh, title is a bit uh, unusual for me, a neuronal circuit related to emotion. Actually, uh, I'm, I, I wanted to show the names of my monkey colleagues, uh, but this is human colleagues. But I think the, the relationship between human and monkey colleagues is very important socially, in, emotionally. So I'm, I'm always interested in how our monkeys are feeling. So uh, I will mainly talk about uh, parallel circuits in the basal ganglia and surrounding areas. So first, I will talk about the basic, uh, simple um, uh, circuit in the basal ganglia, which I did work with Bob Wurtz. Initially, the supercolliculus project to the brainstem to make saccade by making a burst of spikes. And the supercolliculus receives inputs from many areas, but inhibitory inputs from substantia nigra parts of the reticulata. The SNR neurons fire tonically and rapidly, like 100 hertz. Therefore, uh, the SNR neurons inhibit supercolliculus saccadic neurons tonically. And this is very important because when we injected Nusmo into the SNR, the monkey it, uh, made an uh, involuntary irrepressive saccade to contralateral side. You know, the basal ganglia disorders, many patients have involuntary uh, uh, irrepressible uh, movements. I think that tonic inhibition of the basal ganglia onto the target areas is very important to, uh, uh, before choosing one uh, uh, action. Now, so this uh, SNR neurons sometimes stop firing like this, and this change is caused by mainly from the input Again, inhibitory input from caudate uh, nucleus. And the caudate nucleus is usually very quiet, but uh, sometimes fire. So this caudate nucleus firing in induced inhibition of SNR that causes disinhibition of supercolliculus saccadic neurons. So tonic inhibition and uh, phasic disinhibition uh, together a uh, basic uh, function, mechanism of the uh, basal ganglia circuit. But this is still only the mechanism. How this mechanism works, to do that, uh, my colleague, uh, Reiko Kana uh, Kawagoe Yoriko Takikawa, recorded neurons in uh, caudate nucleus, caudate head nucleus, and using memory guided saccade task. Memory guided saccade task. So for example, the monkey fixates at the center, and the monkey will make saccade to either one of these four, four positions. But uh, during fixation, the, one of these positions are uh, turned on to indicate the target cue. The monkey needs to remember the position, and after the fixation point off, mix the card to the remember position. This indicates one uh, caudate neurons respond to this uh, uh, target Q, uh, mostly to the left side, that is contralateral side. This is the uh, memory guide saccade task, ADR, or all direction rewarded task. We created another task that is 1DR, which means only one direction is rewarded. In this block, right side, this block, upside, 
So uh, as you can see, this the same neuron changed the activity very dramatically and very quickly across a couple of trials. They changed the activity. Basically, what they did was whenever whichever position is uh, presented, that if, if that indicates the future like upcoming reward, uh, re uh, response is very strong. If not, no reward um, prediction, almost no response. This is the population activity within the caudate nucleus. So almost 90% of caudate neurons, um, visual neurons, responded to like this. So why that, this is important? If this caudate neurons fire more, that causes stronger disinhibition, uh, inhibition of the SNR, and stronger disinhibition of the supercoliculus. Therefore, actually, saccade reaction time is very short when the reward is predicted than not a reward predicted. So this is the basic mechanism of, of uh, uh, facilitating uh, the action. So why that uh, the caudate neurons change the activity? To do that, we recorded neurons in the SNC, uh, Substantia nigra pars compactor, dopamine neurons, some of them projecting to the uh, caudate head nucleus. And the do those dopamine neurons, uh, excited by the stimulus that indicates the future reward, and inhibited if the, uh, the stimulus indicates future no reward. So this is consistent with the Wolfram Schutz recovery of dopamine neurons showing reward prediction error. And also, uh, Kai Nakamura uh, uh, injected dopamine antagonist, D1 and D2 antagonist, into the caudate head nucleus. And that, in that case, reaction time changed. So apparently, dopamine contribute to this caudate uh, head neurons response depending on the uh, pre predicted reward or no reward. Now, so this one is the uh, what we call caudate head nucleus. Actually, this is the macaque monkey's uh, brain and caudate nucleus. It's a very unique uh, shape, caudate head, body, and tail, very long lasting. Uh, this is monkey's brain, but human's brain, almost the same, caudate head and very long caudate tail. So these, uh, uh, this kind of shape of caudate nucleus is common in primates, humans and monkeys, but not other animals, especially rodents. Why that happens? So this caudate tail uh, nucleus receives mainly inputs from the visual cortical areas. So uh, my colleague, uh, Shinya Yamamoto, recorded uh, neurons in the caudate tail, neuro, uh, tail by creating uh, fractal objects. So simply asking the com uh, computer to uh, create uh, new uh, uh, shapes and uh, with many colors. And actually, the monkey loves to watch this uh, uh, fractal objects. So he, he the Shinya found that most caudate neurons are visual, uh, responsive to these fractals. For example, this neuron responded to this object, this neuron this object mainly or something like that. Uh, very object selective. This happens, object selectivity happens even when the, these uh, objects, fractals are novel. The monkey has never seen any of these fractals and yet the, these neurons responded to them selectively. I think that kind of random selectivity is very important for the um, what we are, uh, I'm talking about uh, next. In addition, these neurons res had receptive field in the contralateral side. So together, caudate tail neurons 
object selective and position selective. Both are very important for the choice of the object. So when we uh, look at this part of the brain, the cordate tail is here, receiving inputs from uh, visual cortical areas, mainly from inferior temporal cortex. So Hyun Kim uh, injected tracer into this cordate tail and found very uh, local, very strong uh, axon terminal in this part of the subsession agora, like this. We call this CDLS SNR, that is caudal dorsal lateral SNR, very localized. People may call pars lateralis. Another colleague, uh, Harry uh, Yasuda, recorded neurons in the codec tail, CDLSNR, uh, by identifying them, projecting to the supercurricus using antidromic response. Many of them, a majority of uh, the neurons in the CDLSNR, project to the uh, supercurricus. So that means visual cortical areas project to the codec tail, then CDLSNR, and the superior curriculum and, and uh, um, control the car very strongly. So the question is, do CDLSNR neurons encode object value? But I talked about uh, codate head. Uh, Masaharu uh, recorded neurons. First, using flexible value learning task. Uh, this is not the position dependent value. This is object dependent value. So for example, in this case, this object fractal was followed by big reward, this followed by small reward in one block of 20, 30 trials. And in the next block, that reward bias was reversed. So it, for each uh, object, big, small, big, small, we call good, bad, good, bad. So then, the, this CDLS scenario. By the way, the when we presented uh, these two objects simultaneously, the monkey almost always chose whichever object is recently or currently rewarded. So the monkey knows which one is good. So this is the re response to response of CDLS scenario. Okay. So blue means bad, small reward, red, big reward. You can see no change. That the neuron was inhibited by both objects without value coding. So why that happens? I thought first we said very, this is simple visual response, but it's not. We created another task that stable value uh, learning, which is simply we uh, let the uh, uh, monkey experience many fractal objects, each fractal associated with either big reward or small reward, consistently across several days. So after several days, five days or so, the monkey recognized the value gradually and why this happened, I, I, maybe I can explain this later. But anyway, so the monkey knows which one is good, which one is bad. And then in this case, we uh, recorded the CDLS and the neuron by presenting these objects, not associated with reward, okay? Passive viewing. Each object not associated with either good, a big reward or small reward. And yet the neuron uh, showed very strong selectivity inhibited by whichever is good object, uh, mostly some inhibition, but mostly excited by bad objects. So uh, Harry also uh, tried the question by doing this task. Initially, the monkey experienced this set of eight objects for good, for bad, 
13 days. And after that, we stopped showing this set of fractals. 108 days. Okay. Then after that, we presented this set of objects. What, how do CDLS and non neurons respond? That's the question. By the way, during this period, the monkey was continuing to experience many, many other fractal objects. I thought it's impossible to remember the ob whatever objects experienced more than 100 days before. But actually, the neurons was still inhibited by good objects and mostly excited by bad objects. So this means this uh, circuit, called a tail circuit neurons, long-term memory, and encode what I, I would call historical values. But initially, I, I talked about caudate head neurons, 1DR task. They change their activity very quickly. So that is based on short-term memory. This is long-term memory. In addition, uh, each we uh, let the monkey experience many, many fractal objects. For example, in this case, the monkey's name was Godfather. Uh, he experienced 1,000, more than 1,000 fractal objects. And among them, for example, 288, at least 288 objects, he experienced either a big reward, small reward, so good, bad, good, bad. But how can you discriminate in any of these fractals? I don't think I can do. <coughs> but uh, for example, this neuron, CDLS neuron, uh, experienced 120 objects, almost half of these fractal objects, and inhibited by mostly all 60 ob good objects, and excited by almost all bad objects. As a population, basically the same kind of response, inhibited by good objects, excited by bad objects. So this means this code tail circuit has high capacity memory, high capacity and long-term memory. So these together, um, at least there are two prior circuits in the basal ganglia, called a head circuit, called a tail circuit. So call it head project to uh, RVM, that rostral ventral medial SNR, which is a different place in the CDL SNR. But both project to the superior curriculus. Parallel circuits control the saccadic eye movements together. Okay. And Called a tail circuit has a long-term memory, okay. encoding historical value, and makes saccade automatically. I'm not explaining, but almost automatically. And also high capacity, more than uh, 100, at least more than 100, 200 objects. And long-term memory, we check the uh, memory uh, uh, duration uh, more than one year later the neurons and behave, uh, monkeys behave the same thing. Almost historic, I mean, uh, history of uh, the life. The caudate head neurons, caudate head uh, circuit neurons, is based on short-term memory and pre encode predictive value. What will come next? Okay. In this case, it doesn't matter. What come next, it doesn't matter. and possibly control, conscious control. But at the low capacity, you know, working memory capacity is very, very small. In addition, uh, we, we uh, re, uh, studied dopamine neurons projecting to these areas. Dopamine neurons projecting to collate head, collate tail, are completely separate. And they behave differently, you know, uh, 
caudate head projecting neurons behave like a, a reward prediction error, uh, like um, Wolfram Schultz uh, discovered. But caudate, caudate tail projecting dopamine neurons encode sustained value, so not reward prediction error. So uh, this uh, study suggests that different parts of the basal ganglia have different opinions, or uh, maybe have, diff have opinions based on different reasons. I think that's very important for uh, decision making, but could be a, an issue of, of uh, problem, lots of problem in psychiatric disorders. Now, I'm talking about parallel circuits, right? Within this circuit, again, there's an, another set of parallel circuits. The codate CDSN neuron behave like this, inhibited by good objects, excited by bad objects. So this inhibition causes disinhibition of the supercurriculus and facilitates the car. Why this happens? It's because called a tail neurons project directly to uh, CDLSNR neurons. That is direct pathway, the basal ganglia. Actually, we, we tested this on electrical stimulation and optogenetical stimulation. In contrast, the bad object, the CDLSNR neurons are excited, and that increase inhibition of supercritics, and probably that uh, suppress the cause. Why this happens? John Kim uh, and, and did study anatomically and physiologically and found that caudate tail neurons project to, um, again, very localized area in this G GPE, globus pardus, called our ventral uh, GPE, and that project to the CDLSNR. And this neuron, he recorded, uh, mostly excited by bad objects. So excitation changed bad object uh, inhibition, and, and uh, excite, uh, inhibition uh, causes disinhibition, and then uh, inhibition. So basically, called it, uh, the basal ganglia circuits are mostly serial inhibitory connections. So that changes the uh, uh, polarity. But this one is based on passive viewing task. We are not sure whether uh, this occurs when the monkey is doing um, goal-directed behavior. Uh, to test that one, uh, another colleague, Hidetoshi Amita, uh, created another task that is sequential saccade choice task. In this case, the monkey fixate, and so here we set, we use one set of eight objects. One of them is presented. So this one is actually bad objects. If he makes a cut and looks at this object, he will not get the reward, no reward. So in this case, he didn't make a cut, keep fixating, and then second object, again, this is bad objects. The monkey made the saccade, but quickly come back. So we allow the monkey to make saccade and come back. OK, uh, rejection. But the, the third object is good objects. And the monkey made saccade and keep fixating, and he got a big reward. And this is a very natural saccade, uh, saccade task. And the monkey can learn this within one day. So uh, after experience this set of objects, the monkey made saccade uh, almost always to good objects, whichever good object appears, saccade, uh, but uh, very uh, rare uh, to bad objects. Of course, bad objects, saccade, sometimes come back. So he recorded uh, CBGP neurons and 
CDSN neural neurons and uh, check the response to bad objects, blue line. The CVGP neurons are inhibited by bad objects, and CDSN neural neurons are excited by bad objects, which is basically the same as what Hyun uh, discovered in passive viewing. This is not passive viewing, uh, actual um, uh, choice task. But there is some difference between saccade, uh, no saccade or saccade. If there is a um, bad object, if there is no saccade, the inhibition is stronger in CVGP, and excitation is stronger in the CDSNR. So apparently, um, this stronger inhibition of CVGP neurons may actually suppress saccade clearly. But this is just correlation. To test that one, the Hidetoshi injected bicuclin into this CVGP to suppress the inhibition, uh, inhibitory connection from collectel. And then the monkey made saccade to whichever good object or bad object. The monkey could not uh, suppress the saccade to bad objects. Okay. This is very significant because rejection of bad objects is critical for choice. Always at the beginning of uh, learning, we tried this one, tried this one. Okay, not, not this good. So then we start not uh, choosing bad objects. But in that pathway, so this one, it, rejection of bad objects is caused by indirect pathway. And that is very important. By looking at this data, that reminded me my old data about the human subjects. Um, Dr. Segawa, when I was a graduate student, I visited, I mean, I worked for him uh, every sat Saturday. Um, that is based on financial support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had no interest in the basic ganglia or anything like that. But I, I was working with the um, human patients. So. But uh, after uh, working with Bob and come, I, I went back to Japan and started uh, working on the uh, human using Saka task. So in this case, uh, memory guy Saka task. Okay. So a Q comes on and keep fixating, fixation off and make a car, okay? Um, so my colleagues are working on this one. Actually, this one I presented recently, but actually this experiment was done maybe in the 90s or 80s or 90s. So no more subjects. I, move, I position and I a saccade speed, eye movement speed. So anyway, so to keep fixating while the Q is presented, but after fixation off, made saccade to whichever position that was uh, queued. So this means that, this suggests that during this period, uh, indirect pathway may be working. The first period, GP neurons are active, and therefore, uh, supercurricular neurons are, uh, uh, GP neurons are inhibited, and uh, supercurricular neurons are inhibited. Therefore, no saccade. But uh, after fixation of direct pathway may be working. Direct pathway inhibit uh, uh, SNR neurons and disinhibit uh, supercurricular neurons. But uh, when we checked uh, patients, early Parkinson's disease, advanced Parkinson's disease, especially advanced Parkinson's disease case, it's very difficult to keep fixating. The Q comes on, mix a car. That was um, very consistent. And instead, uh, the actual saccade is required as uh, often 
they could not make the cut or sometimes hypometric. So sequential activation of parallel circuits may not be working in the Parkinson's disease. Now, so this basal ganglia circuit actually may be influenced by other circuits. For example, subthalamic nucleus. Other than subthalamic nucleus, basal ganglia neurons are almost all, all inhibitory neurons. The subthalamic nucleus neurons are excitatory neurons that project to both GPE and SNR. Of, of course, the GPE also projects to here. But uh, this uh, circuit is the Masaki Isoda found that this circuit is working for switching of behavior, especially from automatic to control behavior uh, by receiving inputs from pre-SMA, uh, the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex neurons. The pre-SMA neurons are very active when something changes and activate a, a subthalamic nucleus, and then uh, the monkey can switch. Another uh, my former colleague, Ilya Monosov over there, uh, he found recently that um, caudate head neurons, some of the caudate head neurons are very sensitive to uncertainty. That is, uh, if the stimulus is followed by 100% reward or 0% reward, uh, consistent, no response. But if the stimulus is followed by 50% reward, then the neuron is uh, very active. And I think this uncertainty is very important for, uh, also, he found that anterior cingulate cortical neurons are very sensitive to uncertainty. I think uncertainty is very important for new learning, which I will explain uh, this one. Oh, by the way, so, uh, uh, this area is very important for deep brain stimulation. How that works, I'm still interested. Um, I will talk about new learning. This is another uh, procedure we did uh, many years ago, 1990s. Uh, this is two by five task for monkeys and two by 10 task for humans. We use this task for monkeys and humans. And we created, uh, we got uh, um, uh, integrated message. In, anyway, so there are four by four uh, buttons. Each time, two of them fire, I mean, learn, uh, lighted. And then you have to uh, press them in the correct sequence, which you have to find. So in this case, one, two, this one, two, and this one, two. Okay. And by repeating this one, the monkey gets small reward, small reward, small reward, and then finally gets big reward. If fail, we go back. We can create many, many sequences uh, in this case. I will show you on the movie. So this monkey has experienced uh, uh, many uh, sequences. The one first one, uh, the monkey is learning uh, new learning. Okay, he has never experienced this one. The second one, he already has experienced uh, one month or two months, so already learned.
he fell second set. Sometimes he's sick. Way to go. Thinking and hesitating. <laughs> My colleagues are interested in. <laughs> Looks like a human behavior, right? If you do this task, almost the same kind of task. Now he, he, he is learning. Well, I will show you the, the activity of pre SM annual um, after this, during this new learning and skillful running, skillful behavior. Now he's already done. Almost. Okay, the same monkey in the same uh, already learned skillful behavior. Surprising, right? I, I'm not sure if I can do it like that. But anyway, so button press or eye movement occurs before the light comes on. The monkey loves this task. Some occasionally we, we forget, forgot to uh, get the uh, water. Uh, uh, then uh, 30 minutes later, the monkey uh, gradually stopped. What I, are you doing? Uh, no, <laughs> no reward. <laughs> And anyway, so this um, behavior involves many areas, including basic anger, but also other areas. Okay. Uh, so, as I said, this is the activity of pre-SMA neuron during new learning and uh, already learned skillful behavior. So, new learning case, very active. This is the before the first bottom press, active here and here, here, here. But the first trial, later trial. Initially, very strong uh, activity, but that decreases gradually. So that is shown here. Uh, in the skillful uh, set, only the first trial, when the, the new set appears, initially there's some activity, but after that, no activity. So this is monkey's uh, data. Uh, Sakai, Kat Sakai. Uh, and did a functional MRI in humans, the same task, and pre-SMA neurons, again, a pre-SMA area around here. Initially very active, this is control, this is learning and so on. So uh, the one set of uh, experiments, initially uh, active but uh, gradually decreased. Almost the same as the monkey's um, neurons. By the way, another area, for example, IPS, intraparietal circus neurons, initially not active, but later and it increased activity. There are some difference in uh, the area. So, they, as Peter, as the uh, paper shows that the monkey and humans, pre-SMA, pre-SMA, SMA, SMA, almost uh, uh, similar, the same kind of uh, structure. So this is the final game. <clears throat> so um, by doing the monkey and human experiments use this uh, two by five, two by 10 task, uh, we found that at um, parallel circuits again, uh, uh, at least two parallel circuits. One is anterior basal ganglia connected with the association prefrontal or parietal cortex and basal ganglia, posterior part, uh, connected with the sensory motor cortical areas. These areas are, are working for, to choose which, which 
means which action, which position, or which objects. Okay. But uh, they are different. So base, the, this circuit is based on short-term memory, new learning, and control behavior. This circuit is very uh, 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 long-term memory based and uh, skillful behavior, automatic behavior. In addition, we found mainly by human experiments, cerebellum also connected to these circuits, posterior and anterior. And this cerebellar input uh, at least uh, 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 strongly uh, indicates when to uh, make action or position comes. So different brain areas have different opinions, but they need to be integrated. So final, uh, how do different brain areas or neurons interact with each other? That's a very important question. Still, an important question. The interaction needs to be changed in various contexts. Abnormal interactions may cause various diseases. The integration of human and monkey research is therefore very important. Thank you.